So we've talked about stars in general dying. What we want to do is talk about the sun in particular, because that's the one that really matters to us. So the uh, general idea is the sun is fusing right now. It is fusing hydrogen into helium in its core as a main sequence star. How long can it do that? Well, we used to think it was about 10 billion years. We now think it's a little bit longer than that. Some books say up to 12 billion years. Others, you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe a little bit less. So uh, I've kind of split the difference in this, this graphic right here. I say 11 giga years. That's 11 billion years. When the sun's 11 billion years old, then it'll be roughly, we know, it. remember, it's shrinking a little bit in the core, which pushes out in the outer parts. So that means it'll be about 1.6 times its current radius and about 2.2 times brighter. Okay. So that's, that's what's happening here with the sun. The core is shrinking a little bit. Right now it's about 4.6 billion years old. So it is just under halfway through its life. As the sun starts to die, it begins to expand. It takes about a billion years for the sun to expand from uh, through, through a subgiant stage into being a red giant. And at that time, the temperature would have dropped to about 3,100 Kelvin. That's why it's going to be reddish in color. It's going to be 166 times the current radius. That means the outer edge of it will be out to about 0.78, almost 0.8 AU. Um, and it'll be about 2,300 times brighter than it currently is. Now, a lot of books at this point point out that Venus orbits the sun at about 0.7 AU, and so it's going to swallow Venus. Now, I want to point out that's probably not exactly correct because it would have lost 28% of its mass. That means Venus would have moved out away from the sun a little bit. Venus would have moved out close to 1 AU from the sun. So... Assuming that it loses mass faster than it's expanding, that means Venus will stay just outside the radius of the sun, and so it'll survive. Earth will move out to about 1.4 AU. That's the currently Mars' distance from the sun. Okay, now, Mercury gets swallowed. Mercury's eaten. You know, Mercury might have been eaten, you know, right away. But Mercury gets eaten right here. And so uh, Venus probably is going to survive. Now, I say survive, but it's not going to be nice because it's going to be very close to the surface of this thing. And that means it's going to be he heated up to the point that it, it's so hot, Venus would have lost its, all of its atmosphere. And the ground itself would be heated to the molting, melting point. So Venus would probably be molten by this point. So a big molten rock orbiting the dying sun. After the helium flash, the sun shrinks for about another billion years. And when that happens, it's, it's shrinking along the horizontal branch and when it's burning helium, eventually it's going to uh, shrink down to about nine and a half times its current radius, about 41 times the current luminosity. Now, it's still going to be a little bit cooler, uh, about 4,700 Kelvin, uh, uh, because it's not going to sh quite shrink all the way down yet, okay, uh, because about that point, it's going to be running out of helium. Okay. Now, a little bit higher mass stars would have shrunk all the way back to the main sequence. A little bit lower mass stars, maybe not all the way to the main sequence. But the sun is going to be, be doing this. And so um, 
over the next 110 million years, and that's like nothing. That's that's like 10% of the time it took to expand the first time. Because the first time it took about a billion years to expand, then it took about a billion years, you know, to be on the horizontal branch, and then only 110 million years, it's going to be doubling its radius uh, um, and and getting uh, uh, almost double the brightness and a little bit cooler, and then it's going to expand in only 20 million years. That's nothing in terms of the life of a star. 20 million years is going to expand to a red giant again, second red giant. This is the asymptotic giant. At that time, the outer edge of it will be almost out to 1 AU, okay, and it's going to be about 30,000 times brighter, okay, and cool to about uh, 3,000 Kelvin, okay, and the sun would have lost 46% of its mass. Venus, what's left of it, will move a little further out. Earth will move a little further out. At that point, then, what happens is the core becomes unstable, and that means that these hydrogen and helium shells, when, when, uh, when what happens is that when it expands, the pressure drops, and so the fusion rate slows down. And so that means it starts shrinking. When it starts shrinking, then what happens is that it, it, it heats up, and the pressure goes up, and fusion rates go up. And so then it's going to expand, and then uh, that's going to stop, and it's going to shrink, and then it's going to expand, and so it's going to start pulsing in and out. So the sun's going to get, get big, and then a little bit smaller, then big, a little bit smaller, big, a little bit smaller. Okay, now it's going to pulse not the way a variable star pulses, you know, and that is, you know, over the course of days, weeks, or months. It's going to pulsate about every 100,000 years or so. And the outer edge is going to get out beyond an AU. Now, most books, you know, don't think about this and say, well, Earth gets swallowed at this point. Probably not because Earth has moved outwards. Now, Venus might get swallowed, but Earth will probably survive in the same state that Venus was originally. The atmosphere is going to be stripped away from Earth. And, and you're going to end up with uh, 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 a molten planet. Now, the red giant wind is going to be banging directly on the surface of the Earth, and it might start stripping away part of the surface of the Earth. Okay. Uh, what's really going to happen, though, is that eventually, as the sun expands, it's going to get so big the outer layers don't come back. They keep expanding and the core collapses, and the outer layers blow off of the sun. So it's going to pulse, 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 and then eventually the outer layers are pulsing outwards at escape velocity, and they detach, and they blow off into space. And then the core is left, and the outer layers blow past the rest of the planets in the solar system. And so you get these pulses here. The outer layers blow off into the solar system, and what's going to happen at that point is you're going to have a giant expanding cloud of gas. This is what William Herschel first saw and said, it's round like a planet. It's fuzzy like a nebula, so I'm going to call it a planetary nebula. So the planetary nebula is ejected as the last gasp of the dying sun. The core is hot. What's left of the core, it's mostly carbon and some oxygen. That's about 120,000 Kelvin at this point. The core is about half the mass of the sun. The rest of the sun's mass is blown off into space as the red giant wind or the planetary nebula. This core is blazing hot, giving off enormous amounts of ultraviolet light that's causing this nebula, the gas in the nebula, to 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 excite and then give off its own light. And so, so the nebula is giving off light. The gases in the nebula are giving off light. What's in the nebula? A lot of hydrogen and some helium. 
and a little bit of carbon and oxygen are in there because they got dredged up in all the expanding and contracting that happened. And so that gives you the gases in this nebula, hydrogen, helium, carbon, and oxygen. Venus, if it's left, is about 1.3 AU out. Earth is now about 1.8 AU out. 